Hi guys, Julia from Just One More Card here for you today and I want to show you how you can make your coloring much more radiant with just a few simple tricks. I attended a craft show recently um, and bought this gorgeous butterfly stamp and I figured out, you know what, I want to color it up but I want to do it somehow special. So first of all I need to stamp it. It's a wooden stamp but since I'm not going to do any masking um, and since I'll be fuzzy cutting it out, it doesn't really matter where I place it. So I don't really need a stamp -a magic to place it properly. But um, in my test stamping, I realized that I don't get um, quite a good coverage or a quite a saturated black from just one impression. So I'm using just the green piece of the stamp -a magic, holding it in place while I lift the stamp off, inking the stamp up again and then just sliding it in here again and I knew through testing um, that two um, impressions would be enough and now you can see that I have a really nice and crisp impression. I want to let this dry before I do any copy coloring so I'm grabbing my card base here and I'm just wetting it uh, with clean water. This will help the color to run. Um, when you wet your surface then the color will run much better. I'm using my Gansai Tumbi watercolors, but you could use any watercolors that you have on hand. And all I'm doing here is just kind of trying very hard to randomly place my green color. And then I'm coming in with yellow color and um, just place it in between. Um, you can use any colors that you want. I just wanted to have something nice and fresh. And these were like, you know, citrus colors. And in the end, I added some of the pearlescent um, Gansai Tumbi color, which will add some shine to the card. Now I set that aside to dry and I colored my butterfly. Um, I, because I stamped it twice and I was using very light colors, I wanted to give it some time to dry. And I'm using very light Copic colors. I have listed all the colors in, on my blog post uh, and in the product description below the video. And the reason I'm using very light colors is that I'm going to add some detail with pencils and I didn't want to go too dark. And actually while I was filming this I had the settings kind of weird so the colors are a little bit more intense than what you're seeing here but I, through my experimentation I figured out that light colors would work best. And I'm trying to work in segments so that each segment would have its own color. I tried, uh, before I did that, I tried to blend from, um, you know, like within segments and everything. And it was a nice look, but it was not quite what I was going for. Because, you know, we do color blending all the time. So I wanted to do something different. So the Copics are basically just there to give me a, um, like a base color. This is just a base shading that I'm laying down with my Copics. And then I will come in with my pencils and add more details. So that's why I kept it very, very simple, just one color. So you can see that the color is actually a little bit more intense. I changed the um, recording settings here. And I'm coming in with my polychromos pencils. You don't have to use polychromos pencils. You can use any pencils that you have. Give them a try, see if they work. And what I'm doing is I'm coming in with the, um, I think this is a mid, the mid-tone color. And then I'm blending it out with a with the lightest color. And again, all these colors are listed below or on, on my blog. And um, then I'm coming back in with the, the darker color. And I'm being very careful because I want to make sure that um, the one edge of the segment is very dark. And it blends out towards a very light shade of the same color. So I'm actually coming in with an even darker purple just to make sure that I have a lot of contrast. And then I'm blending this out with the mid-tone and then I'm going to come back in with my lightest color and blend that out. And um, you can't see that here, but when I um, go towards the, the lighter part of the segment, I'm actually flicking similar to what you would do with Copics. I am actually lifting up the pencil to make sure that my flick ends very softly so I won't have any harsh lines. And I'm also, um, uh, when right there, what I'm doing there, I'm applying um, actually a little bit of pressure so I will get a lot of color down. But the further I get towards the lighter part of the segment, the less color I apply to also make sure that I can blend out nicely and into a soft gradient. So here I'm also using three different shades of red to make sure that I have a very nice um, deep contrast with the other colors. Uh, I'm going to progress through the other sections and then I'll catch you up on how I put the card together.
already done one half of the butterfly and I hope you can see the difference here how much difference it makes to add some detail with the pencils as compared to the other side where there was no detail so I did the other side of the butterfly the very same way I didn't film it because you know it's the same thing I adhered the butterfly with foam tape to my now dried watercolor background and I'm using a sentiment from Altenew and Versafine black ink to finish up the card here and then I'm grabbing my uh, black gel pen and I drew, drew in the antenna of the butterfly because, you know, I didn't want to fuzzy cut those out. And then I added a few dots with the black pen and with my white gel pen. After I was done filming, I actually came in with a, um, a Copic multiliner in the Strengths 0.1 and uh, enhanced some of the black detail in the butterfly itself, some of those black lines, because they kind of got muted through the pencils, and then I just enhanced them a little bit. You will see that in the close-ups of the butterfly. So here you can see the finished card with the shimmery black background and the dots that I added, and the nice detail that we got thanks to the colored pencils. So it's it really pays off to combine the colored pencils with the Copic markers. You can see here again just how vibrant the detail is and your coloring looks much more radiant because you were able to add a lot of contrast. You could try to do this with just Copic markers, but I'm not good enough to get those thin flicks all the time. So I'm using my pencils to achieve that effect. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you give um, com combining uh, Copics with pencils a try. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and I'll try to answer your questions. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you again soon. Bye bye.